In Newton's second law for rotations, there's a constant of proportionality between torque, the thing that causes rotations, and alpha, the actual angular acceleration. That constant of proportionality is called the moment of inertia of an object. And just like mass, it represents the inertia, the resistance of the object to start rotating, just like mass is the resistance of an object to start moving linearly. I want to talk a little bit about what is the moment of inertia. Remember, the moment of inertia appears as this constant proportionality, I, between torque and alpha. And the larger it is, the more it's going to resist rotational motion. As with mass, the linear counterpoint or counterpart, uh, it, it, it's being bigger means that I'll get less acceleration for the same amount of input or torque. But as with other angular quantities, it's going to be related to the, its linear counterpart, mass, by having uh, some multiplier for the distance from the axis of rotation, or radius. We've seen that with both angular acceleration and angular velocity. Let's think about why this is important. Imagine two barbells set up to rotate around a central axis. So we can think of something like this. It's going to look like a, um, a spinning weather vane or something like that. If the two barbells are really close together, it's kind of easy to get that system spinning, whereas if the two barbells are really far apart, then it's kind of hard to get that, uh, that object spinning. So it takes actually greater torque or force uh, to get object B spinning around as it does for uh, build, getting object A spinning around. And we need to build that into how we calculate moment of inertia. We actually define the moment of inertia, and we already saw this once before, as the sum of all the masses times their distance squared from the axis of rotation. So a moment of inertia gets really big if the masses are big, or it gets really big if their distance from this axis of rotation is really big. In fact, it gets bigger faster to, just by spreading the object out. We already saw that for a, a single object when we, we introduced the idea of torque, I equals mR squared. And if we have a system of objects all separated at different radii and different masses, then we calculate the total moment of inertia by calculating the total of m times r squared for each of the objects.